okay the next one is uh, bias variance uh, trade off so this is like a important term uh, you will uh, see in many things uh, even in interviews so uh, you will be asked this question but uh, majority of the people who understood most of the theory uh, can't uh, answer this without a clear understanding so i'll tell you what it is with the diagram so let's have three graphs so I'm just trying to plot the same data here. So um, we have uh, simple algorithms and more complex algorithms. Even for features, we can have less number of features and more number of features. So mm -hmm. let's say we have a uh, less number of features and we are using only a simple algorithm. So what it does is it will actually uh, don't follow a general thing. So it will just uh, go for a simple uh, straight line. So that is like a simple algorithm. You don't capture that much information because of less number of features and even the model is somewhat uh, uh, less complex. That's why it doesn't capture more information. So in the middle part, uh, if we have a right amount of uh, features and we use the right model means, we try to capture the overall trend. So overall trend is goes like this. So this is called good fit. So we don't lose that much information. We try to generalize the model with these points. So this is underfitting. So this is somewhat a good fit. So in overfitting, if you have so many data and in the model also, it is so much complex that it captures so much information, the model will look like this. So it's capturing all the information uh, in all the points. That's why it follow this kind of pattern. If you follow this kind of pattern means it's not a generalized model. So it will prone to the training data alone. So it won't predict uh, that much well uh, when you test it in real time. So what is the overall objective here is we need to try to find the good fit. That is a reasonable number of features we need to give to the model. Features means uh, in input attributes. That is the input. And we need to use a proper algorithm that is not uh, so much complex and uh, not so much simple. So that is the objective. So in the right, we have high variance. So because of high complexity, in uh, in the left, that is for underfitting, we have high bias. So we don't have that much complexity here. So it must be uh, uh, in the middle because uh, yeah. if it's too high, it's not gonna predict uh, uh, the, right, uh, the right data. And yeah. if it's under, then it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's also not gonna predict the right data. Yes. So if you consider a total graph means, if you consider the error, so this is the error graph. So this one is bias. Let's consider this. And this one is variance. So what you can see is at here, the error is low. Uh, this is considered as the model uh, error percentage. So how can we reach this is, we need to have a low variance and low bias. At this point only, we can able to reach this minimal error. So if you increase the bias means the error 
will get higher over the period of time. Also, if you increase the variance means, it will also uh, go high over the period of time. So we need to find a best uh, fit over here. So that is the bias variance uh, trade-off. Uh, you need to trade off the bias and uh, variance in order to find the optimal point for a generalized uh, good model. Okay. And we also covered overfitting and underfitting. And most of the time, this will happen in uh, deep learning scenarios. If you have uh, uh, less number of data means and you are training with a big network, it will usually underfit because we have less number of samples. And if you keep on training the data uh, over time, so in deep learning, you will be having some number of iterations. So if you say, let's have a good number of iterations is around uh, 500. Let's say you trained around uh, 5,000. So that will uh, capture so much information. So it will be overfit model. In that also, you need to mm -hmm. set a number of epochs in an optimal way. Uh, we need to have a generalized model. So okay. now I understand why uh, when I try to work with uh, with uh, what is called uh, with uh, TensorFlow, I had uh, 500 iterations. I got mm -hmm. an approximate uh, answer, but uh, when I try to have, uh, add more iterations, so I can get a, an uh, accurate uh, answer. I got uh, a, a more farther answer. Yeah, um, if you consider like uh, while training in uh, deep learning, you will be having that uh, training accuracy and uh, validation accuracy, right? Yeah. So uh, if you keep on training uh, more means, you will get more number of training accuracy. Even uh, you may reach 99.999. But uh, if you see the validation accuracy, at some point, it won't improve. Like let's consider uh, around 93, uh, the validation accuracy stops, but uh, you are increasing the training accuracy too much. So at that point, you will know. So this is a overfitted model because uh, we need to stop at uh, 93 itself because we already trained as much information as possible. So like that, uh, we can able to debug whether it is uh, overfitting or uh, underfitting. We can uh, see that in the later part. And uh, the next one is, gradient descent. <laughs> 